Well, hello again. It's the conservative pelican here. And as you can see, we're in uh, a new, we're outdoors for today's video. It's, uh, the weather's been improving. Got a cold front moving through. It's probably about 80 degrees. Fairly humid, but next few days is going to be probably 75, 77. At night, it's going to get down to maybe probably below 60. So it's like going to be perfect weather. And... I decided that I'm just getting tired doing videos <laughs> with the white wall behind me. So why not, um, why not do a video in my uh, picturesque Northwest Greensboro home? And no, I don't. I don't own this house. <laughs> I have roommates, but hey, I was trying to be uh, clever there. Anyway, today's video, uh, it's going to be a fairly lengthy one, that's why I'm sitting down, uh, and I hope you will too. It's going to be about how and why I am a Republican. So, I hope, if you want, go ahead and pause this video and go get your favorite beverage, get some chips and salsa, maybe a Hot Pocket, and come back and... We'll talk. Okay. How I became a Republican. It's um, not a straight line. That's for sure. My, and I was not born into an overly political family. My, when I came into this world back in 1986, um, both my parents were registered Republicans, um, and they, but they were not activist Republicans like I am. They were just the type of Republican who votes in every election, uh, which living on the eastern shore of Maryland, the rural eastern shore of Maryland was about every two years. Uh, we lived out in the country, so we did not have m municipal elections um, in odd number of years, like a lot of the more urban places do. But mom and dad would all, my mom and dad would always vote every two years. And one of the most influential things they did with me growing up was they would always take me with them when they voted and they always took me into the voting booth and I think that one thing really had a huge impact on me as a person and I would say that's probably one of the three most important things you can do as a parent for a child is, one, um, instill in them some sort of importance of uh, knowing what the government's doing, civic education, taking them uh, with you to vote. Number two is, this is probably more important, number one, but number two is instill in them good morals, good manners, politeness, as well as uh, uh try to take them with you to church every Sunday. And number three is uh, going to your local library and allowing your child to explore the library um, at least twice a month. So those are three things that I think are really every parent should do. But getting back to the, um, the purpose of this video... So, they would always take me with them to the voting booth. Um, and also, growing up, I I think the very first time I realized that I really like politics was in fifth grade. There was this teacher. Um, I think she's still teaching. She might be at the same school at Preston Elementary. Named Mrs. Excuse me. There's 
there's an airport probably not even a mile from where I'm at, uh, Piedmont Triad International. So might might have to interrupt a few times your planes, but other than that, it's very quiet here. Um, so getting back to what I was saying, first time I really realized that, you know, I think I like politics. That was in fifth grade. It was with um, social studies teacher, and she might still be there at Preston Elementary School. Her name was Mrs. Sloganhoff. <laughs> yeah, she had like one of those long... Uh, hard to pronounce German names, but Mrs. Sloganhoff, uh, really, really, really did a good job as a social studies teacher. We watched a lot of videos. Uh, we talked a lot about economics. Uh, we watched the Econ in Me series, which is very good. I highly recommend that. Um, and, but we also, in, I was in fifth grade, 96, 97. So in the fall of 96, there was a presidential election. And it was between um, Bill Clinton was run for election and Bob Dole was the the, the the Republican candidate. And so we had actually watched a debate between Clinton and Dole. And I was like, hey, this is some pretty cool stuff. And I think Ross Perot was even in this video debate too. But yeah. Um, and, you know, being my parents are Republican, I was also... Um, I guess you could say Republican by default. <laughs> I, I was a very good kid growing up. Um, my sister, I love her, but uh, she's a good kid too. But she, you know, maybe not as good as I was. <laughs> um, so I watched that, and of course, uh, being in being in fifth grade, um, myself and my classmates, we we were starting to become self aware of. You know what was going around, going on in the world around us. Of course, we had um, in fourth grade we had Cowboys, Steelers in the Super Bowl, and I was Team Cowboy. And it seems like a lot of my close friends were Cowboys fans, <laughs> and the people I maybe did not like as much as Steelers fans. So, but fast forward to fifth grade, um, we had this Bob Dole. Bill Clinton rivalry at lunchtime every day that fall. And, uh, I was always on Team Dole, believe it or not. Even though going back now, he was a very weak candidate, and the 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 Republicans could have ran Ronald, Ronald Reagan back in '96 if they wanted to, and still would have got beat by Clinton because <clears throat> he was a good candidate. And unlike today's. Democratic Party, he was actually fairly moderate and wanted to work with the Republicans. So, uh, fast fast forward a few years. Did I bring my water out here? Somewhere. Yeah. But, so now it's year 2000, of course. Um,. I was in ninth grade, and at least in the state of Maryland, in the ninth grade, you're required to take American government. That was probably ended up being one of my favorite courses, not just in high school, but my whole uh, 13 years of public school education. And I had a teacher named John Highland. Uh, he was fresh out of college, so he's still teaching, I'm pretty sure. Not at Colonel Richardson high school, but probably somewhere else, and he was, uh, like a lot of young people out of college, he was liberal, and he was for Gore, and, but he did not, um, what's the term, I'm, he didn't, like, rub her faces, like, oh, I'm poor Gore, and if you're for Bush, you're a, you know, you're a blah, 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 you know, he was not like that, um, uh, and, of course, we watched, I think we watched all three of the debates and maybe even the vice presidential debate. But, yeah, that was a very fun class. And um, But that election night in 2000, that was the first presidential election where I had actually watched, you know, the news that night. And I think we were watching CBS, and I think, you know, my parents were watching, too, and I... um. I always remember this. I was the very last to go to bed. I think I stayed up to probably about 2 in the morning that night. And, of course, the race was still not decided. That was the big hanging Chad Florida controversy. But still, um, 
So that was another key moment in my life with politics. Then, 2004, I was 18, first time voting. And that's really when things really started to take off. Um, and for the first time ever, uh, with my parents' permission, I put a yard sign in our front yard and had Bush Cheney 04 on it. And our neighbors right across the street who were just wonderful, wonderful, friendly people, some of the best neighbors that, probably the best neighbors I've ever had in my 32 years on earth. John and Chris Skill were their names. I think they're even still living there, but they were uh, huge, and I think still are liberal Democrats, and they had a Carrie Edwards sign right across the, right across the street from ours on Ganey's Wharf Road in Caroline County, Maryland, so that was pretty funny. Um, but that year, you know, I started really, I watched uh, E.J. Pipkin against Barbara Mikulski run for uh, the U.S. Senate in Maryland, and uh, I really liked E.J. Pipkin. I think he eventually moved to Texas, um, but great guy, really, re really a great Republican. Um, of course, Mikulski cleaned his clock because Maryland's such a deep blue state, and where I grew up was, a, was um, yeah, the Eastern Shore, very Republican, and then you had the Western Shore, Across the Chesapeake Bay, the blue, the dark blue part of Maryland. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, um, I remember I got those signs. Uh, my county that I lived in, Caroline County, was very rural. It did. It was also very Republican. Um, mo like most Eastern Shore. I actually had to go to the county over in Talbot County and go. They they actually had an office there for uh, George W. Bush and got a sign and put it up. Um, and then 2005, 2006, I was at Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida. Um, and they were starting a college Republicans group. Now, I should tell you that when I registered to vote in 2004, I really did not know what party I was. Um, so I registered as an independent and, uh, I asked the young lady, I forget what her name is, but um, they're star college Republicans. And they asked me if I was interested. I was like, "Yeah, I'm interested, but would you? I'm a registered independent. <laughs> would you let me come to a meeting?" She's like, "Oh, sure, sure." So we came to went to a meeting and um, started liking. But I think that um, that group really. I went to a meeting, I think it was the fall of 2006, but I, um, I was still an independent, um, but I actually voted straight Democrat then, um, like a lot of people, um, and that group, at least when I was there at Southeastern University, it never really got off the ground for some reason, um, and then, uh, 2008, I was, uh, my parents had gone through tumultuous divorce, started in 06, and 2007 was really when the poo hit the fan um, with that. I was back at uh, community college, uh, living in Florida now, and in 07, 08, I decided to leave college. I just couldn't handle work and, and also going to school. While my parents were, you know, just uh, constantly fighting, I couldn't take it. Um, but 2008, I was really, really following the presidential race. I started listening to talk radio a lot, and I, um, yeah, watching every debate, even nights when there wasn't a debate, I was still watching. Fox, CNN, MSNBC, you have, you know, what, whatever. And um, that year, of course, between John McCain and uh, this guy named Barack Obama. Um, and I actually really, really, really liked Barack Obama. <laughs> I liked him so much. 
I put a Obama Biden bumper sticker on my car and huge, huge fan of him in 2008. Voted for him. And um, I got to say, to this day, I'm really, I'm really happy I voted for him in 2008 because what I'm going to talk about next will really blow your mind. So it gets to be summer of 2009. Obama's been in office now for probably six, seven, eight months or so. And I really start saying, you know, I'm not so sure about this Obama guy. He just doesn't really seem like his views are not really lined up with my views. And he's pushing cap and trade, which the uh, which is an excessive EPA regulation, which drives up energy prices. And here I am, you know, I'm trying to live off of, uh, like, you know, working two jobs, uh, one job was paying like nine fifty an hour. The other job was paying like seven twenty five an hour, making very little money. And I was like, you know, I really cannot afford higher gas prices. Um, and it just seems like that Barack Obama supported higher gas prices. And also another thing he was pushing was Obamacare, you know, the, the health care law. And he was going to force people to buy health insurance, even the young, healthy people like me. And I just started really listening to and watching a lot of conservative talk shows more and more. And really, one of the one one of the huge influential voices in 2009 was Glenn Beck. And back then, he had a talk show every day at 5 p.m. on Fox News Channel. So I watched him, and he really opened my eyes to who Barack Obama is everything like that. So, um, 2009, yeah, things were starting to change for me. I was like, okay, like, I think I'm still an independent, but I know I'm definitely not, not a Democrat. So now I'll talk to you about a very important day in my life. The second most important day in my life. The first most important day will always be uh, asking, accepting Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Okay. That happened on May 24th, 1996 at a promise keepers rally at RFK stadium in Washington, DC. The second most important day was December 19th, excuse me, December 15th, 2009, because that was the day I, I, I had moved to Wilmington, North Carolina, a um, month prior to that. And I went down to the DMV because I had to transfer my driver's license from Florida to North Carolina. And one of the questions they asked me was, um, would you like to register to vote? And I was like, yeah, Absolutely. So I, and then next thing they asked me was what party affiliation did I want? And they listed, they said Democrat, Republican, Green Party, Independent. And I was like, hmm. And in that moment, I thought to myself, you know, this Barack Obama character, he's really disappointed me. He's really let me down. So I, at that very moment, I was like, you know what? It's time for me to say, Bobby, you need to really not just be a person who votes in every election, not just a person who watches the news every night, but you really need to fight. You know, you need to be a fighter and activist. And at that very moment, I was like, you know what? I want to make life a living hell for Barack Obama the next however many years he remains president. So at that very moment... When the DMV person asked me what political party I was, uh, I said, Republican. And that's when things really, really jumped into overdrive in my life. Um, a couple months after that, I had gotten a, <clears throat> excuse me, an, an, an invitation in the mail. Or something. So I opened it up and it says, uh, 
Welcome to the New Hanover County Republican Party. Thank you for registering as a Republican. This, this, uh, we're going to meet on May, I think it was 25th or something, at Jungle Rapids Water Park. On, they were inviting me to a Republican Party meeting. And I was like, you know, I'm not really sure about going to this meeting because because I used to think as as being a citizen, you know, voting was enough and really anything past that I would be out of it would just be out of character for me to attend. Because I always thought political meetings were where a bunch of wealthy people who drove Lexuses and BMWs they went there, they dressed in a suit and tie, everybody dressed suit and tie, and they all had Rolex gold watches, and they all, basically, the entire time they were there, they opened their checkbook and wrote checks, you know, over and over again. Um, I was like, I just wasn't sure if I wanted to go to this Republican Party meeting. Um, but really, though... This is early 2010 now. Things had really, like, like there were a lot of other influential factors that were going on in my life. I had discovered a really good local talk station named The Big Talker on, uh, that time it was at 93.7. And my roommate had it on, <laughs> and I was listening to this guy, and he was yelling and screaming. Screaming is like that's right. I shed it. I can't take it anymore. Found out the guy's name is Mark Levin. And whoo, airplane going up. So I started listening to Mark Levin. Became even more of a. I was a baby Republican, but now I'm like, hey, man, I'm a, I'm a red, red conservative Republican. And then one day, I think it was Saturday afternoon, I was running errands around Wilmington, and I tuned in this guy named Tony McGee. And turned out he was black and Republican. I was like, whoa, this is so cool. Another guy was Ben McCoy, who ranted about local government in Wilmington. And then, it was a couple months over that, I was working my pizza delivery job for Domino's at that time, and during the Mark Levin show, during his, one of his breaks, they had a local break for um, this organization in North Carolina that still exists called the Civitas Institute, and they said that they were coming to Wilmington in early May to do a big tea party conference, and... And the cost is only like 10 or 20 bucks. Very affordable. I mean, you got breakfast and lunch and a snack. And yeah, great. Of course, now it's like it costs 200 bucks to go to their big conference and rally over here. But <laughs> hey, it was good and cheap while it was, right? So I went to that and um, saw a lot of people. Um, but a lot of them were very like older than me. A lot of gray hair and gray haired people and I'm like the young gun that was there and but they they really um liked me and they warmed up to me and I think going to that event it really helped me to um excuse me it really helped me say that you know what I'm gonna go to this Republican Party meeting. I just need to go check it out, you know, and, and, and I think I'll be okay. But if it's one of these places where people just ask for money the whole time and write checks, if it turns out to be one of those things, then I just won't ever go again. So I go to this, uh, the New Hanover County Republican Party meeting in May 2010, and, uh, it turned out to be something completely different and completely 100% better than what I thought it was going to be. 
it was people who drove all kinds of vehicles. You had, you know, 10-year-old Hondas, new Toyota Avalons, uh, BMWs, pickup trucks, just the whole shebang of vehicles. And you had people, you know, you had some younger folks, some older folks, um, but a lot of common folks who... Um, you know, didn't make much money. Much, you know, you had your wealthy attorneys and your wealthy business people, but you had your carpenters and people that did not make much more money than I did. It was a great group of people. And, um, and basically, they had a meeting and they had some candidates running for office. And we, we were just coming out of the, the primary election because it was late in May and the primary was held early May. And so you had gotten candidates there and a bunch of people and it was fun time. And I was like, hey, you know, I need to do this every month. So I started going every month and started to meet some really good people. And, um, you know, and soon enough, um, I remember, um, you know, these people had really started becoming like a family to me and just a great time. I, the following year, 2011, went to my first county convention. That was a blast. I became precinct chairman. Nobody else from my precinct showed up. I was like, all right, well, I'll take the job. And <laughs> and then I went to the district convention, and but the state convention that year was in Wilmington, which is great. I didn't have to spend any money on hotel, really very little on gas money because the place was like five minutes from my house. Um, and I paid like, it was like 350 bucks for the whole convention, including the meals and course i didn't really care for the food that much that's why now when i go to state convention i just go to the convention business session but still that was when i was like okay i'm gonna start going to state conventions every year and um that year i'd also started going to the district executive committee meetings and that was really cool because you got to go all around the district and go see different beautiful places in North Carolina, drive around a bunch of old country roads. That was a really wonderful thing, too. Um, and, yeah, just really, you know, I mean, I used to be one of those people, you know, voting, just watch the news, but then, man, I was like, whoa, I'll become like an activist here. And um, 2012 rolled around, and I was big in Newt Gingrich, and... You know, I, I'll never forget I was at an Americans for Prosperity meeting <laughs> right when the primary was getting ready to hit in North Carolina. And I stood up and said, look, there's a clear choice in this race. You can vote for a true conservative, Newt Gingrich, or you can vote for a mush moderate like Mitt Romney. And most of the people there, you know, I got... Um, pretty good round of applause. A lot of people liked it. But then, of course, the very first time, this is the very first time in politics when I knew that even in a Republican primary, things could be a little divisive. And so I had a person uh, come up to me after the meeting. They were a big Romney person. They were actually running the Romney campaign. And they said, well, you got to read this book and see what really what the Romney's all about. Now, I'd be honest with you, I was going to read the book, but I never got around to it. And turns out now that Mitt Romney is a real putz, you know. Um, but I will say, though, I did vote for him in the presidential election, but mainly it was really to get back at Obama because I voted for Obama in 2008 and really betrayed me. Um, but part of the reason why it was easier to vote for Mitt Romney than maybe what it should have been was... Um, there was this uh, beautiful, beautiful girl, um, a couple years younger than me. I was 26 at the time. She was 24. Um, and she was running the Vic. At that time, you had the victory offices, uh, each region, each county. And <laughs> I um, thought, you know, 
think I kind of like this girl, but I really don't want to ask her out yet. Um, but hey, I'm just I'm just gonna try to keep myself available and door knock, and so that kind of helps me vote for him. It also helped me lose a few pounds too. <laughs> Because beautiful ladies, they can be really good motivators of weight loss, especially if it's somebody who you want to uh, go out on a date with. Um, but that, though, fell through. She met somebody else when she was in Wilmington. And, but now they're married, and I'm happy for them. And, you know, still, um, I'm, I'm not bitter about it at all. Um, but that was that. In 2012. Um, of course, 2013, that was the big chairman's race between Claude Pope and Jack Brosh. I think I was like, there were 16 people from New Hanover County that went to the state convention in um, Charlotte. Three of us, myself included, voted for Jack Brosh, but everybody else voted for Claude Pope. Uh, uh, Vice Chair voted for Glenn Bradley. Uh, most people in my caucus, my county, voted for uh, Marcus Kinley, who's also another guy I really like. Uh, and now, you know, him and I, we both live in Guilford County now, so hey, you know, I think he's going to become a really good mentor to me over these next few years. Um, but after 2013, really the latter part of 2013, 2014, I was like, I was working two jobs, and being involved in politics is great. Some I was really passionate, still am passionate about, obviously. So I'm doing this video. I've uh, been talking for 31 minutes, so yeah, really passionate. But late 2013, late 2014, I was like, you know. There's got to be something more to life, my life, than working two jobs and just living paycheck to paycheck. And, and I was like, you know, I was really missing Florida a little bit. Um, I just didn't like the fact that in the wintertime in North Carolina, the temperatures would go up and down like a real big, steep roller coaster. One day it could be 75 and sunny. The next day it could be 30 and snowing. You know, and then next day be 40 and sunny, 65 and stormy, you know. <laughs> but that, and I was just thinking to myself, you know, I think I can do better for myself. And so I decided to move to Florida, to Orlando. And I was like, you know, I bet I can be just as active and enjoy being in politics. I told myself that I bet I can be just active in politics and enjoy it just as much in Florida as I did in North Carolina. Uh, but moving to Florida was one of the, moving back to Florida was one of the biggest mistakes in my life. And I had made a completely wrong assumption about the politics down there. And of course now you can tell me if you want me to in the comments that what happens when you assume Bobby, well, you make an ass out of you know, <laughs> yourself and me, you and me, whatever. But yeah. Um, and I think one of the big signs for me that I should have stayed in North Carolina, well, there were two mainly. One was this guy, I'll say his name, he's not on Facebook very often, his name is Joe Rumsey, and he's been in Wilmington since early 70s. Really, really great guy, very down to earth, very friendly, very uh, approachable. And he told me, you know, please stay here, Bobby. You know, you're going to move away and you have to get yourself, you know, a different situation, meet new friends and just stay here. And, you know, looking back, I really, that should have been 
a sign from God. Because I believe that God will put people in your life. Like, God will give you messages in your heart and your mind. But he'll also, he'll have people who will come up to you and actually give you messages from him. That's, and I think that was one of the messages I should have heeded. Another thing, too, was I was looking at the Republican Party Florida website, and I compared that to North Carolina Republican Party. The North Carolina Republican Party has their plan of organization and their platform on their website. Very good, well-organized website. However, the Republican Party of Florida did not have that information. And they believe, they I mean, they have a plan of organization, but they don't put it out there publicly. Um, and I actually had to go to a one of the counties down southwest Florida and look at theirs because there was they had the state plan of organization on theirs, but the state plan of organization for Florida was very vague. Um, that was not a good thing either. But I moved to Florida anyway. Uh, county party meetings were very good in Seminole County. Young Republicans group was very good and actually better than North Carolina's uh, Young Republican group. Um, but I really wanted to be involved in the state party because I was so involved in the state party in my first tour of duty in North Carolina. You know, I was on the executive committee, went to all those meetings, all the state conventions. I was like, awesome. But I went to my first meeting. The way the Re Republican Party of Florida is set up is um, they have meetings four times a year, every quarter. And they have two, two big days. Most of that time, you're in like uh, workshops. You know, you go and you learn about getting out the vote. They have speakers come. And then they have, you know... Um, Various committees you can go to. They have the Rural Outreach Committee, the Rules Committee. That was a great one. And different committees. But yeah. Um, the first one I went to was just like a one. It was like I had missed Friday. So I just went to one on Saturday. It was only 30 minutes from a house in Orlando. But the next time um, I went to the one in Tampa. Okay, and I should say, well, first let me back up. The first first RPF meeting I went to was in Orlando in early no, it was May of 2015, I think. And the way these meetings ended was they started with the executive committee meeting. And basically what it was is they had rehashed everything they had gone over in the previous day with all the committees. The committees would give their report to, uh, you know, the chairman, Blazingolia, of the RPOF and all his little, uh, you know, fellow committee people, what have you. But then... Right before they got to the really good part, you know, the, the Robert Schulz order and that sort of thing, they would put the meeting into closed session, which is something that I hate and will always continue to hate. Um, they did it. They moved me in closed session, and unless you were a state committee man, you had to leave the room. And Blaze, even, he sent people around the room making sure that only people with the blue state committee badges stayed so yeah I was like oh my gosh Ugh. but I thought that was only a temporary thing like okay maybe next time they'll have the meeting open the whole meeting open okay <clears throat> so next time we're in Tampa now this is August of 2015 and um, I go the whole two days uh, the first first day I was there I really got my first bad sign that, you know, I really should be back in North Carolina. Uh, I was in a rules committee meeting, and it was me, probably about 10 or 15 other people in the room. We we're sitting around this big rectangle table. Okay. Um, Blaze Angolia comes in the room, the RPF chair, and he he's sitting 
directly across the table from me. And he looks around the room, but most of the time he looks at me a lot. <laughs> and he... Yeah, so he's looking at me and... The plane, the plane. <laughs> and... So he's most looking at me, and then he opens his mouth and says, I thought rules committee meetings were supposed to be closed. And he just, and then he just goes that, and he goes on a tangent about how, of course, he's talking to the entire group. Most of the time he's looking at me, probably because I'm like, a, you know, he's never seen me before, I guess, but whatever. You absolutely, everybody has to absolutely support the Republican candidate, no matter what. Da, 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 you know, party loyalty. So he's like, okay. I get the point, man. Yeah, it's like, relax. Why is everybody in Florida so mean and stressed out all the time? Jeez. Get a hold of yourself, please. <laughs> but that was the first moment when I was like, uh-oh. Maybe I should still be in North Carolina. And then the next day, of course, they had the executive committee meeting. And they, um... Unfortunately, once again... They moved the meeting into closed session. Yeah. Strike two for me. But what I'm going to tell you next, there, there, well, there actually is like four occurrences. Uh, but these next two were really monumental. The third one was um, China. What am I saying? We were back in Orlando again for the state meeting. It, this was January 2016. Okay. And so I'd gone to everything over those over that two-day period. And I was like the only one from Seminole County who was there the whole time um, at the meeting. And I was actually mulling a run for uh, state committee man. Because like, well, well, that's the only way you can get on state executive committee, I guess. That's what I'll do. Uh, and my opponent, who I'm good friends with now, and even then, really, really nice guy. A, a great, kind of a great, he's a couple years older than me. So yeah, kind of a big brother mentor. Uh, when I was in Florida, Jesse Phillips is his name, a very good guy, but he was my opponent for state committee man. And look, I, I was, I'll, I, my intention was running a good positive campaign, you know, no name calling mudsling like you see so much, especially in Republican primaries. <clears throat> but anyway, January 2016, I go to the RPUF quarterly meeting. The only one from Seminole County who went like, Everything in the two-day period, I went to all of it from Friday morning at 7 a.m. until they kicked me out Saturday afternoon. <laughs> um, but Friday, I go and for me, like I try to go to as much as I can at these places. So I go to a uh, congressional district meeting, and it was not my congressional district. It was District 3 in the Gainesville area. And so... I, I'm in the room. I think I'm the first one in the room. I might be. But anyway, I see that the chair comes in. And I say, hi, how you doing? And he, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget the look on his face. But I say, hi, how you doing? And he just goes, he gives me that awful, awful stare that so many people in Florida do. They just, when you say hi to somebody, it's like they, they either, they ignore you, or if they don't, they just look at you like, you know, who the hell are you? Don't say hi to me, you know, you shouldn't be here. That was his reaction. So that was another moment <laughs> that I was like, oh uh, yeah, I need to go back to North Carolina. Another moment, and and this one was probably the worst moment of them all when I was involved with the Republican Party of Florida. Okay, the very next day, we end like we end all the quarterly events in our POF with the executive committee meeting. But this time, things really got out of hand because the chair 
and also the national committee man, Peter Feeman, the day before Peter had come to, I think it was the district I was in, District 7, Congressional District meeting, he came in and was so friendly and welcoming, and he said, you know, I'm fighting these RNC rule changes that the uh, Ron Paul people were so much against, and he was so friendly and so welcoming. Well, I was in that meeting, and he was like, in the executive committee meeting, not even 24 hours after he was so friendly, like, he was in that meeting, and he was trying to do everything he could to push all the business, and even like all the committee reports into closed session, and Blaze agreed with him on everything. And I was like, oh dear, what in the world is going on today? Oh, <laughs> so... The and then so they move the meet so they call closed session. This time though, I'm thinking, hey, I might be able to stay for closed session because I'm the only one from Seminole County who was here. My chairman's not here. My state committee man's not. Here. Nobody from Seminole County is here. So I tell the guy, listen, I I I know I'm don't have a blue badge, but I'm the only person from Seminole County here. Is there any way I could stay? And he looks at me at first, and he says, you know, Mr. Crawford, you make, he, he gave me that look like, you make a very good, compelling argument. But then he pauses for about two or three seconds and says, um, but Al Schwartz is right behind you. And I was like, oh, oh, he must have just walked in. I missed, I was like, hey, hey, Al, how you doing? We kind of wave each other, and it's like, okay. So I leave. Um, but it was kind of like that scene in my in, in in my cousin Vinny when when uh, what's his name Joe Pesci gives a you know is up you know being the lawyer and the judge played by Fred Gwynn is saying um, you know uh, Gambini that is a very good well thought argument. And Gambini goes, he smiles and says, thank you, judge. And then the judge goes, overruled. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, but then, um, so I go back, I go from the hotel where the meeting was at to the park garage. I get in my car and, 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 you know, even before I start the car, I start crying. And the whole 30-minute drive home, I cry. And I'm just, at that moment, I'm just like, you know what? <clears throat> I've had it with the RPOF. I can't be involved in the state party anymore. I'll, I'll, I'll be involved in the um, YRs. I'll be involved in the county party. But don't. I want anything to do with the state party for it. I'm like, nothing. So, but I still thought, hey, I can, you know, I could, I, I still want to be in Florida, I think. I think I still want to be in Florida. You know, I could still make things work. I'm going to still run for state committee, man. And yeah, things eventually are going to be great again, not just kind of bleh. Well, <clears throat> really, the final moment where I knew I needed to move back to North Carolina was I took myself and a friend, a good a good friend of mine. I was actually about my dad's age, but him and I were like such good friends when I was living in Orlando. Um, Tony was his name and still a good friend, I should say. Um, but we go out to the, our congressional district is going to pick, um, delegates to go to the national convention 2016 in Cleveland. And Tony wanted to go. I was like, okay, you, you can ride along with me. No problem. So we go to the meeting, right? And we, um, we left, 
the Castleberry area about five o'clock and we drive to Apopka. Okay. This drive should, without traffic, take no more than 30 minutes, maybe, maybe even 25. Okay. But we get stuck in traffic in Maitland and we get there probably, the meeting supposedly starts at six. Okay. Well, we get there at like, uh, like five minutes of, okay. And they meet at a Perkins restaurant. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, usually I thought Perkins has like really a lot of space, but this had to be like the world's smallest Perkins. I mean, you know, it, fortunately it's at a shopping center, so there's still plenty of parking, but I was parking like a half mile away from this place. It was, it was ridiculous. I dropped Tony off and then I go look for a parking spot. And, but we get in there and, um, it looks like they had started the meeting like really early, you know, um, not only that, but there was like, not just one congressional district there. There's like three congressional districts there. The whole room, you could not find a seat. Okay. And no tables, you know, packed, 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 but Add an insult to injury here. The congressional district meeting is held in a room, like a soundproof room. So you can look in the window into the soundproof room. You can see what's happening, but you can't hear anything. And I was like, man, you know, pardon, pardon my word, I'm going to say, but I was like, the Republican Party of Florida is a shit show. I was like, at that very moment, it is, it is effed up, you know, compared with what was, what, what I was doing in North Carolina, this place, you know, North Carolina is so wonderfully run, Florida's not, and at that very moment, I was like, I gotta get the heck out of this state, you know, because in North Carolina, the congressional district means they always meet at a place, plenty of parking, plenty of seating, they, you know, they have a nice big room. They welcome everybody. They don't go off their little soundproof booths and play their little establishment parlor games. No. North Carolina is so much better run. And also, they always start their meetings maybe 5, 10, 12 minutes late. So people that travel long distance will get there. And also, they always generally meet on Saturdays or Sundays. They never meet on at 6 p.m. on a weeknight when the majority of people that are going to attend are going to have to fight rush hour traffic. I mean, it's just absolutely terrible what the RPOF is. Sorry, it's a shit show, okay? I'm sorry to tell you that, but it is. So, if you want to get, in politi if you want to get involved in politics, do not move to Florida, okay? And don't say I didn't warn you, okay? But... So at that very moment, I things there are a lot of things in my life that are not going well besides RPF. So I have to rebuild some things, get a get another job with a better company, stay stay with my dad for a while, and try to save up some money. But um, about two months ago, I moved to Greensboro, and I love it here, Greensboro, North Carolina, and I'm getting back involved in the party again. I went to the state convention, had a blast. Um, so that that was a story of how I became a Republican. I started off really small, got involved in a very good organization, North Carolina, and but I did made a big mistake, did not count my blessings. Try to go someplace where the grass was supposed to be greener on their side. It was not. Try to get involved in a very corrupt organization. RPOF did not work. And longed to move back to North Carolina, and now here I am. So that's how I became a Republican. But <clears throat> why am I a Republican? And I'll, I'll try not to spend another 53 minutes answering this. Okay, I'll try really hard not to. I'll try to make this a nice short answer. Why am I a Republican? For me, it's really about individual empowerment. The fact that, you know, the, 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 the Republican Party um, 
you know, they support economic policies that empower individuals. The Democrats, they're all about, you know, putting people in the groups and people need to be reliant on other people in order to get ahead. I'm like, you know, I'm I'm a very independent person. I'm an introvert. <laughs> I mean, I don't I, I like to do my own thing. I like to make my own schedules. I hate relying on other people, even though I do want to get married someday. Um, but and another big thing why I'm a Republican every two weeks I get a paycheck, okay? And on the paycheck, you know how much they take out for the taxes and social programs on my check? About 17% goes to federal income tax, which was all the Democrats' parties, which is all the work of the Democrats. Social Security, another program created by the Democrats, opposed by Republicans. Medicare, another program never supported by Republicans. You know, Republicans want people to keep their own money. They believe that you, as an individual, can spend money better than the government. Okay? Another thing, the reason why I'm a Republican is because, and I've noticed this with Donald Trump as president, is you look at energy prices, gas prices, okay? Republicans, when they're in power, they do everything they can to raise production of oil, which in turn creates lower stable prices, okay? Um, remember when Obama was president, we had close to four years of gas prices over three, 325, 350 a gallon. You know, since Donald Trump's been in office... I've never paid over three dollars a gallon, and now we're sort of, for the last six nine months or so, we've been right around two twenty five to two seventy ish a gallon. So, gas prices have been relatively low and stable. Um, another thing, reason why I'm Republican is because the most important thing to me, even besides politics is my faith in God and my Christian faith. And the Democratic Party in 2012 at their convention denounced God not once, not twice, but they booed God, took it out of their platform, okay? He they denounced God three times at their convention, okay? The Republican Party has always been a party that has been supportive of religion, and not just Christian religion. All you know, religious, re religious freedom across the board. All religions, you know. Also, you know, I've um, I'm very into family values. I I have friends, some friends who are um, gay, lesbian, homosexual. However you say it, okay. But as a Christian, I love them. You know, and I do, but I will tell you, though, that I'm very big into supporting marriage as the union of one man and one woman, okay? Now, if gay people want to get married, that's okay, but there needs to be, you know, you, the, the, the two have to be, uh, you know, there has to be a fine line between uh, right and wrong on that issue. And another thing, too, is I, I'm a big fan of um, children, okay? I believe I'm pro-life, and I also believe that children should only be brought into a world, okay, with a mom and a dad, okay? Um, and, yeah, I think that's, well, yeah, that about sums up
how I became a Republican, why I'm a Republican. So that's my video. Took an hour, but I have to explain some things. Okay. The conservative Pelican is signing off.